So I'm with Bruce Chester from the All Over Macadamia Company, the prime farmer, the director, the leader, the man with the passion for this macadamia farm, big beautiful macadamia farm in the macadamia capital of Australia, right? Yeah. Which is the northern rivers of New South Wales, one of the most beautiful places on earth that I know of. What about I'm, yourself? I'm in total agreement with you, I moved here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and how long have you been in the macadamia nut industry? Bruce? Um, I bought this place and um, that was my first real exposure in 1987. But in 1977 or the mid 70s, my father set up a macadamia farm mm. as part of a superannuation as it was then. Mm. And I was lucky enough to be exposed to it then. And when I decided that my previous life no longer suited me, I decided to go nuts, that's, so to speak. That's three decades or, or plus. And mm. how, what's the industry been like in this area, being the capital? and, and it's, it's been a fantastic industry, whereas a lot of your primary industries have gone through your ebbs and flows, and this certainly did, particularly through the 80s and into the early 90s, where the prices per kilo were down to around a dollar a kilo. Is that what customers are buying or what you're No, what we sell for, selling. and that's a dollar a kilo nut in shell. So that would translate to $3 odd a kilo of actual nut, because two thirds of the weight is in the shell something that's always important to remember when mm. pricing yeah. um, and nowadays you're probably getting sitting around about six dollars six dollars fifty a kilo for in nut shell. in shell yeah. and the price is only going to be holding or go up um, basically the world market has reached a point where it's now feeding itself and this nut in particular is the least supplied nut that you will find even though it has grown to the level where quantities are supplied yeah and that's you know because it's such a tasty nut it's such a nutritious nut it's very high in magnificent um, fats specifically the hdl fat which is the good type of cholesterol we need to it, protect us from heart disease most certainly really as a fat it's really prized because it's such obviously fat is important for us and it's got low carb as well so that's a nice balance that people like to take so as you, as you can see the demand is increasing and how how is the world industry um, reacting to that demand okay well nowadays macadamias are growing in quite a few parts of the world and actually it was the government um, put in a research and development tax in about 1993 and from there the Australian knowledge was exported into growing in South America, China, Brazil, a few other places, I just mentioned the same continent but still, um, but it's expanded so nowadays say with the Chinese which is the best example of all the Chinese cooking has not traditionally included macadamia nuts, but it includes a lot of nuts. So you can see that now with the demand that's starting to gain inertia, um, that menus will expand a lot. Mm. It's not merely the food of the macadamia nut. And as you said, it's 78% monounsaturated yeah. fatty acids, which is just an enormous oil content yeah. for any vegetable, um, for any vegetable uh, oil source. Yeah. It's a fantastic and rich source. So you've got cooking related oil, you've got health related oil or beauty related oil mm. because that's rich in a certain fatty acid or um, called, I think it's called palmitoic acid, I probably don't pronounce it mm. correctly, but it's found in the children's skin, the sebum level, and it diminishes as we age. And that oil in particular is where the macadamia industry um, helps with the replacement of whale oils and higher order marine mammal oils in the cosmetic industry because of that high content of palmitoic acid. And although the vegetables have certain quantities of it, mm. the macadamia and the protea, which gives rise to Guandana land at some stage, mm. are the only two vegetable matters which have substantial percentage quantities of palmitoic acid. Beautiful. I hope I say it right. <laughs> That's an important feat that it can, it's a... A whale oil replacement. The eradication of seafood. Oh, and, absolutely, and, uh, absolutely. Sea Just for cosmetics, not yeah. even merely yeah. for food, you know. I'm sure it's a big industry and yeah. a big source of, oh, you know. Oh, how, how do the Japanese justify it? Scientific 
purposes? Yeah, yeah. Is, is that the one? No. We won't mention what happens to all the product, but scientific gets away yeah, with and, it. And look, macadamia is actually indigenous to Australia. Absolutely. So how's the industry been in this, what we call the macadamia capital of, of Australia, which is this Northern Rivers area of New South Wales? How's the industry changed? Because I'd imagine with the increase of demand that people would kind of be becoming less authentic and less true to really the kind of energy and the nature you feel in this northern rivers i mean you're one of the very few macadamia organic farms yeah I mean, yeah are there are very farms? few do you know how many farms approximately there are around here or around here i know of 20 and i'm sure there are more okay. but i know of 20 mm -hmm. okay they are my good friends and in many instances my mentors in educating me about what to do and how to approach so there's less there's not so much competition around this area or? Uh, for organic there's there's virtually okay. none yeah so there's 20 Organic or 20 or just 20, 20 organic macadamia farmers that I know of, okay? But all of the others around the area, it's, it's size matters, okay? And and how it's, many others are there? Oh, there's, there's thousands and there's, thousands there's more and more. Yeah, yeah. Wow. The place across the road, that's two and a half thousand trees. I'm 500, for instance. Yeah. My brother's place, which is just over there, 1,900 trees. The place down the very end of the road, which is a big operation, is 19,000 plus trees. And that's one of three plantations that he owns. Wow. So, those are all non-organic, those big Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you couldn't. You could not do it. Though. Yeah. Um, you've created a monoculture, which doesn't occur in nature. Yes. Um, now, I'm on the small side of a monoculture. Okay, yeah. so I can use things like push pull techniques to a fair deal. Mm. For instance, if people say to me, Do you spray? and I'll go, Yeah, chili oil and garlic oil mm. predominantly. You spray unless that a lot? I'm no, I don't have to. Um, I would much rather the natural selection of predators take care of the insects Beautiful. that come in, and I'm not applying some broad spectrum insecticide which takes out the predators as well as the insect pests that you're trying to get to. Mm. The problem with getting on that treadmill is you've got to wait for the predator that you didn't want, or for the insect you didn't want to populate again before you attract the predators. I'd much rather keep the predators, mm. thanks. Mm. I don't mind losing a small percentage. If it gets outrageous, I suppose I've got to think differently, but until that point in time, I would much rather hold firm. Okay, that's really, I really liked how you said that real intimate minority of organic macadamia farms compared to the big boys yeah. just caring about size. How is, is that reducing in size, the organic? Um, people, you know, yeah, it's, it's harder. Mm. Um, I, I'm actually at a point where I've become infected, okay, so to speak. I don't blame other people, let me emphasize, mm. okay. I'm proud of the fact that, that um, this latest insect pest in the macadamia is, has found its way to my place. Ha, ha, ha. Um, so but it has. Uh, well, different stages yeah, of we've got to work out how to beat this. Um, everybody else around has started using a biological spray mm. which turns this particular bug, Sagacis weevil it's called, mm -hmm. and it makes it infertile. Mm. Now that weevil has a life cycle of 380 days so it implies that you've got to spray at least mm. once for two years mm -hmm. okay now let me say biological spray it's a chemical spray mm. it's not going to kill anything but it's still a chemical spray um to use it once maybe i could get away with it or twice if i had to and this is the point of where i have a problem i have a beautiful looking crop on mm. in flowers at the moment or in start of flowers mm. um last year it was savaged because i've inherited everybody's sagacious weevil so i I'm, I'm undecided to what to do there's principles and there's protection i suppose it's going to come down to and i'm going to have to make probably a rash decision on the day <laughs> now, one one big thing about your business is you make oil, macadamia nut yes. oil, for cosmetic purposes, more yes. so than cooking purposes. I don't do the co cooking. Okay. Um, where I get my stock from uh, for the oil, we got cold press, and it's only reject nut. It's the waste nut that so food industry doesn't want. How that works with you and the people who you sell them? Okay, um, I, the people who I sell to, they're all after the food quality nut. I, I don't sell food quality nut as a marketeer, yeah. but they all do. Um, so I and the other 19 all sell their nut into the co-op. We then, uh, myself and one other, okay, we buy the reject nut, which is either immature or insect damaged. How much did you sell the nut to them for? 
uh, roughly six dollars a kilo and we buy it back for roughly 25 cents a kilo okay because it is waste projects yeah. but then we absorb costs of transporting yeah. it to somebody who will do an organic cleanse on a cold press and that is important to us yeah. um, so we have the nut cold pressed it's a hundred percent comes back mm. It's only macadamias that are used as cooking grade oil. I then filter it down to get to my cosmetic grade oil. The other fellow, he takes his 20 litre drums of um, cooking grade oil and bottles them the way he wants and mixes them with chilli and lemon myrtle and all those sorts of things. Nice. Um, yeah, oh, it's great. It's a beautiful oil that does that with. Um, but I go for an entirely different piece and I only do, everybody says to me, mate, you know, you can add this and this and this and you can get several yeah. product lines. I have three lines of, pro of that product. One is 120 mils, the other is 250, and the third one is 500. That's it. <laughs> and so tell us about when you started bringing that into the market, as you were just explaining about how specifically we live in right next to Byron Bay, which is a hub of yeah. masseuses and healers. And so how did that react, how did that react with the market? Oh, beautifully. Um, I, I was fortunate enough, and I am very, very lucky, but I was fortunate enough to meet the fellow who told me how to go about this. And he wanted virtually for me to actually sort of do this, mm. but not take on the huge capital cost mm. of setting up cold presses yeah. and things like that. So um, once he exposed it to me, I, um, I, I gave a sample to a friend who was a masseuse in Byron Bay, a very, very good Feldenkrais. Mm -hmm. um, she, she and her husband turned into very, very good friends, but straight off she's gone, I want more of this. Mm -hmm. And so I supplied her for several reasons. Firstly, her clients could put on their white blouses or shirts and it wasn't going to be stained a big one. Uh, oh yeah and it washes out in soap and water so Beautiful. their towels she was just stoked with but the thing's got a life a lifespan of two odd years now you open your apricot kernels or other similar oils and you've got the time is clicking basically yeah. okay it's that 30 days or thereabouts and they oh yeah absolutely oh. i've had mine okay this is not a scientific test, but I've had it in a clear glass bottle behind, behind a window, but not in full direct sunlight all day, in my shed, which is hot in the summer, cold in the winter, mm -hmm. for five years, and it did not turn rancid, right. discolour, do anything. Because most oils will become rancid to light. Absolutely, not a problem. Well, macadamia, I mean, olive, yeah, olive yep. doesn't, is one of the few that doesn't. Very. But, okay, yeah, most do. Most do not like light. And I still package in a midnight blue bottle, more for the look of the bottle than anything. So that's basically the oil and, and how I blundered into that. And if Pearl hadn't sort of gone, I love this stuff, mm. and put me on to many other people, yeah. um, it, it wouldn't have gone. But if, from there on, I don't advertise it. I never have. Mm. Um, basically... Um, people ring me up and say, I would like some more of your beautiful oil. It's hardly, I want to order some oil. It's m mostly mm. that. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, you were saying about the history, okay, and I know it's only brief, but basically it started in the Northern Rivers in about 1969. The yeah. Um, CSR, okay, mm. they planted a big plantation mm. out of Dunoon, which you, yes. the capital, okay, mm. the macadamia capital. That is still there. Mm. Um, so it's not like a, it's, it, the tree doesn't last for 30 or 40 years, yeah. the tree is an 80 year old yeah, tree. Alright, so here we got a beautiful organic macadamia tree on your lovely property in the Northern Rivers. Show us what's going on here, there's different types of flowers, a little bit of nuts. Wow. Okay, well you've basically got the first stage of the flowering on, they call these a raceme. And each of these little nodules potentially can be a nut. Okay, they're not that efficient as reproducers, but it's not uncommon to wind up with, say, two to ten nuts along a raceme. Ten's a lot, but it's anywhere like that. Mm. So as they open out, and they will get to, if I can go to the left a touch. So the third stage is around this, where the flowers have actually opened up. And from there, when they're fertilised, it'll work out how many nuts it'll hang on to. But in another 
few weeks, when all of these are open, like these flowers are, basically it looks like a cathedral because you've got this beautiful white sitting in all of this green and the sun just flowing through on it. It's fantastic. Beautiful. And that, you know, even if you're getting two to ten, you're not getting the full potential. Look how many there are in one branch. That's huh. a little segment <laughs> branch of this huge tree. So yeah, Massive, big, massive. Big numbers. Yeah. So what's the initial, can you point out the initial stages? Yes, most certainly. Here's your first stage. Yeah. Okay. And then your second stage where they haven't filled and opened yet into the third stage. Mmm. Oh yeah. Beautiful Magnificent. Smell. Magnificent, isn't it? Yeah. Fresh. You can understand why bees want to come to it. Yeah, you get a lot of bees around here. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, you see, being organic, once again, they, they know. Unfortunately, my neighbours who spray mm. are really, really considerate. They always tell me when they're going to spray. Beautiful. And they always make sure that the wind is blowing in another direction mm. for it. Yeah. So they are so considerate. Yeah, that's okay? And that's the way that it should work. I just want to emphasise the danger and the damage that pesticides can do. You know, especially the pesticides used in, garden, in agriculture is mostly water soluble. So they go into all the water which is all the water not only in the environment and go into our waterways and contaminate our drinking water, our bathing water, but the water in our body and we know that we're 70% water at least. Absolutely. So it's just, you know, highly toxic, um, so many influentials and factors on our health. Yeah, and it's not just the insecticides, there's the herbicides yes. which they will use to clear all the ground with, there's the fertilizers that they use which will acidify the soil when they're washed through acid. Yeah. There's so many things that affect our water system mm. and also our soil system where the minerals are derived and we need those for our health. Yeah, and just to clarify, these companies are spraying the pesticides on the floor because with macadamia nuts you wait for them to hit the floor. They have to be harvested off the ground. The, 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 the nuts that drop off early they're my oil, they're immature, yeah, okay? Yeah. Um, so if you went around picking them, mm. they, you're supplying me with yeah, oil. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Cool. okay, beautiful. Yeah, um, oh. but basically that's about the run with mm. macadamias mm. and um, it is an expanding industry. Yeah, wow. you know, everybody will sit there and go, oh, you know, this one's dying or we don't want beef industry or the fish are running out or whatever industry you might have as a mm. food industry. This is, there are more farms coming on, wow. the supply is going to be greater mm. and the demand is unsatiable at, or unsatiated at the moment. Wow. So and you think, uh, as you said, China and Asian countries are exploring this in their food use. Oh, they, they, it's, it's a natural the evolution. The health, uh, oh, the the health industry. Becoming more health conscious. They're recognizing the value in macadamia nuts. Yeah. It really is one of the prime nuts in terms of health benefits. It most certainly is. And they don't know, all need to be roasted, salted or anything. Yeah. I can tell you those raw nuts are just yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And when you pick them up straight off, okay, they've actually got a big moisture content and they taste more like a coconut mm. than they do a macadamia. Right. Yeah. And it's only as they dry out and that moisture content evaporates mm. that the oils, the creaminess comes back in that mm. tastes more like a macadamia. Beautiful. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Bruce. That's an absolute pleasure, Dylan. Thank you for coming up to my place. Thank you for having me.